the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longine watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Elliot Haynes, an editor of United Nations World. Our distinguished guest for this evening is His Excellency Dr. Ali Sastro Ami Joyo, Ind Indonesian ambassador to the United States. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Ambassador, I'm sure that our audience is very glad to see you on our show tonight because you represent the newest nation in the world, and a very large and rich nation. Now, sir, will you tell us just something about the Republic of Indonesia? Give us a brief geographic description of your nation. Well, thank you uh, for the words of welcome. Uh, Indonesia, as you know, is a new country, and its geographic uh, location is, uh, I might uh, say, a very... Uh, it's an uh, island. An it's an island, island nation, uh, isn't it? Nation and it is situated in the southwest Pacific and is just uh, located on the cross uh, crossroad of two very important highways. Uh, one from the mainland of uh, Asia leading to Australia and the other one is from the north leading from China, from Japan to the, to the south. And it's an island kingdom. There are many islands, aren't there? There are many, many islands. We have approxim approximately 3,000 islands it's, over there. It's an extremely rich country in terms of natural resources. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I think it uh, ranks uh, the third uh, behind the United States and Russia. And third. how many people do you have, sir? We have approximately uh, 78 million. How many of those are literate, Mr. Ambassador? Oh, about 20 percent. 20 percent can read? Yes. And they're mainly Muslims, aren't they? Uh, well, uh, yes, most of them, uh, about uh, 85 percent are Muslims. Mm -hmm. And do you have any Christians there? We have, and uh, the, uh, the government, in the government we have cabinet ministers who are Christians. And of course you were formerly a, a colony of the Dutch, weren't you? We were, you? yes. You were developed industrially. What, in, what industrial development you have was largely the work of the Dutch, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, but there, was, there wasn't much industrial development under the Dutch, was there? No, there were not. But uh, most of the in industry is uh, most, uh, mostly agricultural industry. Mm -hmm. Sugar, you know, and uh, tea and coffee. Were you in a very strong position <laughs> economically when the Dutch left? No, I should say not. Why, well, was, why was that? Uh, well, that is, I think, uh, because of work conditions. In, uh, and in you, the and you, uh, you attained your independence from the Dutch immediately after the Second World War, didn't you? Not immediately. We proclaimed our independence in 1945. And it was, was finally August. granted uh, two or three years ago? Uh, in 1949, actually, we uh, concluded the so-called Round Table Conference in The Hague. And you, you are now a completely free and independent nation of 80 million people that on these right. very rich islands. Yes. We now, sir, tonight our people are particularly interested in the relations between our two governments. We Americans are wondering who are our friends and who aren't. Now, is your nation uh, friendly to America now and to Americans? Yes. Uh, we have the most friendly relations with your government. Uh, Mr. or rather Governor Dewey, after his return from Indonesia on a recent trip, stated that the Indonesians by and large did not want to have too much to do with uh, Westerners including Americans. I think uh, that is not correct. 
You don't believe that's true? I don't believe that is true. Now, where do you stand in our great struggle with the Soviet Union today? Are you on, our, on the side of the West, or are you on the side of the Russian power complex? We, uh, we are not aligning ourselves uh, with either of the, uh, of the controversial camps. You are, you are, you, you are, is it fair to call you neutralist uh, in, in, the, well, in the great struggle uh, between me, the West and the East? Let me put it this way. We have formulated our foreign policy as an independent foreign policy. But it does not mean that we are, uh, we have a neutral policy. We claim that our foreign policy is an independent one but it is an active, uh, new, uh, independent Most of our policy. listeners are familiar with the positions taken by Nehru of India. Now, would you say that your, your, the position of your nation uh, as between, the, in the struggle between Russia and, the, and America, is, your, is the position of your nation approximately that position taken by Mr. Yes. Nehru? Yes, approximately similar to that. What would uh, the position <coughs> of your country be, uh, Mr. Ambassador, if China should move aggressively south, say in Malaya? You mean Red well, China? Red China, yes. Or uh, well, Burma? Uh, that is uh, difficult to say now. And, uh, of course, uh, we are aware of uh, the changes, eventual changes, of mm. that kind. Has your government yeah. recognized the government of Red China? Yes, we have recognized. And, and you've I've also pressed for admission of Red China into the United Nations, that haven't you? That is right, yes. yes. What, what, do you, what is your position there? Why do you press for that? Our position is that uh, Indonesia believes that uh, Red China, which uh, we recognize, should participate uh, in the normal way of uh, international intercourse. Do you think the United Nations? And do you so think that if they did participate in that manner, that the Cold War would ease off at all? Uh, yes, we believe that. You do believe that, yes. Mr. Ambassador. Recently, uh, Mr. Bullitt, uh, former ambassador to the Soviet Union, told our audience that today in India he doesn't believe that either American capital or American technicians are welcome. Now, is American capital welcomed in Indonesia today? Well, I, did, I do not know very much about India, but uh, as far as Indonesia is concerned, I, will, I would like to answer that. As, uh, you, you think that the, the, that the American capitalist, uh, the American with some savings, can invest it in Indonesia with complete safety today? Yes, I think so. Is there very much investment going on from America into Indonesia? Not yet very much. Mm -hmm. Recently, the, uh, uh, the cabinet of Indonesia fell and was replaced by a new one because... Uh, not yet now. Well, the pardon. pardon? Not yet replaced up till now. Oh, that hasn't been replaced yet. yet. But it fell because the, uh, that cabinet seemed to be about to sign an agreement with the American government to administer some technical assistance and so forth. Would you say that that was a, a move away from cooperation with the United States? I don't believe that this is uh, the uh, right position that way because... Uh, uh, we have, I think, to wait until a new cabinet has been formed. Well, <laughs> but uh, immediately after that, during the sixth session of the General Assembly in Paris, it seemed to many observers as if Indonesia was being uh, more negative in regard to America than it had been before that. Well, chronologically, I think it is not uh, quite correct in, in stating that because the cabinet felt after the session in Paris. Now, Mr. Ambassador, that is audience. not the consequence, or mm -hmm. that is not the result of the. Well, the two were linked, I thought. Uh, I don't think you don't think so. Thing, no. One of the things that our audience is always interested about, from our friends and foreign nations, is uh, how, what do you want from us? Now, are you borrowing money from the United States now? Well, we have uh, got a uh, hundred million dollars loan from the Export Import Bank to help uh, uh, bolstering up our economy. Well, you've borrowed a hundred million dollars now from the Export-Import Bank, and that's to, to bolster your economy, yes. to bolster your currency, I assume. Well, uh, of course, that is uh, in connection with our uh, economy. Currency is not to be, uh, to be separated from the economy that is, yes. I think, a part and of it. And, and, of course, you are a great, rich country yourself now. Yes. Now, what can we Americans expect in return from Indonesia for, for our loans that have already been made and perhaps additional loans? Well, uh, I think that uh, your interest in Indonesia is to see that in Indonesia, as an independent free country, 
and uh, should be kept uh, strong enough to manage its own affairs as a sovereign country. I see. Well, now, are you a, a possible ally of ours in any difficulties that we might uh, have in the future? Well, I stated before that we had in a very friendly terms with you. I but see. not in a military or alliance no. sense. No. no. I wonder if I could switch the topic for a minute and ask you about uh, Japan. Apparently, uh, Japan needs markets and can't yes. turn to red China for them. Do you think that Japan could keep her economy going in, uh, uh, with trade in Southeast Asia? Well, I think uh, for a great deal, Japan has always uh, been dealing with Indonesia as far as Indonesia is concerned. But and do you think we it could keep its economy going by trade with Indonesia and other South Without, uh, without the trade with China? China? No. Well, I don't know, but uh, I think uh, it has been a historical fact that you <laughs> Japan has always uh, have uh, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, as a commercial intercourse with China. As, as a final question, sir, uh, we in America, many of our young people, are interested in nations where there's hope, where there's development. We were once a young country ourselves. Now, is Indonesia a hopeful nation today for young men, for your young men and the other young men of the world? Well, I think uh, Indonesia is a young country. I see. And managed by young men. Well, thank you and very uh, much for being with us tonight, <laughs> sir. Very kind of you to be with us. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Elliot Haynes and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was His Excellency Dr. Ali Sastro Amajoyo, Indonesian Ambassador to the United States. The first Queen Elizabeth was fascinated by watches and collected many very valuable and beautiful specimens. However, she was greatly perturbed, so it was said, by their particularly bad habits. They were always either an hour slow or an hour fast. How very different from the fine watches such as Longines, which are so freely available in the reign of Elizabeth II. We might say particularly Longines for the Longines watch is worth much more than the little more it costs. If you own a Longines watch, you know how its superior construction pays off in years of satisfaction, how perfectly your Longines watch functions, how well it keeps on telling good time year after year. The superior quality of Longines watches has won highest honors from the highest authorities, 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals from world's fairs and international expositions. First prizes literally by the hundreds from leading government observatories. So if you wish to buy for yourself or as a gift just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world, your choice might be Longines, the world's most honored watch. For that important Easter gift, that graduation presentation, or your anniversary token, in fact, for any gift occasion, Longines, the world's most honored watch premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches. This is the CBS Television Network.